Thank you, Master. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, we surrender to you. We surrender our minds, our hearts, our souls, and our spirits unto you, O God. Take over in our lives. Do with us as you will, Lord. Let your kingdom be established in our midst. Let our obedience be known all over that we walk in obedience to you. May it be evident when people see us. May they see what you do when people obey you. You make a distinction between those who serve you and those who don't. Teach us, Lord, that we may walk in your statutes and in your commandments. Lord, keep our focus on what you have commanded us, that, Lord, that we may be able to eat the good of the land. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people shout a big amen. I say all God's people shout a big amen. I say shout a big amen. All God's people shout a big amen. Oh, we bless his holy name. And God is able. Having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Hallelujah. Yes. You need to believe it. This is the year to hold fast. And one of the things that you must hold fast is the confession of your faith. God is able. This is something that you must believe and confess it. And you will see the manifestation you will see the ability of God manifested in your life daily. Because God is able to make grace. Grace is what we can't achieve, is what we do not qualify for, is what in the natural cannot be ours. And by God's mercy and grace we get those things that we don't qualify for say it now with confidence and god is able let's say it again and god is able to make all grace abound towards me that i always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work amen amen yes yes you can celebrate the lord because he is He will bring it to pass. He will bring it to perfection. Confess it and possess it. And you will be a beneficiary of what God is going to do because he is not a man that he would lie. He is not a son of man that he would change his mind or repent. He has said it and he will do it he will make it good amen 
Amen. Amen. Welcome your neighbor to this service and tell them this is your special day. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20. Exodus 23 and verse 20. It says, Behold, I sent an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. I want you to underline that scripture, that verse, verse 23 in your Bible. We'll read it again. Behold, I sent an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him but if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an, an, an adversary to your adversaries for my angel will go before you and bring you into the, the, the Amorites and the Hevites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hevites and the Jebusites and I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods nor serve them nor do according to their works but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars so you shall serve the lord your god and he will bless your bread and your water and i will take sickness away from the midst of you no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Somebody say amen. Today, I want to show you or to speak about the benefits of obeying the Lord. The benefits. We said you have to hold fast your obedience. And I want to show you what Isaiah chapter 1 really means and verse 19. The word of God says, If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Mm -hmm. Verse but, 20. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Say amen to the reading of the word. Amen. Isaiah says, If you be willing and obedient, two things. Number one, God will never force you to do anything. Tell your neighbor, God will never force you to do anything. 
He created us to will. We can will to do what is commanded and we can will to disobey. Did you hear what I said? He will never force you to do anything. He wants you to be willing to do what he says. You don't need somebody to watch over you. You don't need a like a watchman, like a spy. To check you all the time to find out whether you are living right or not it has to be a personal choice you must be willing to live for God it can't be forced on you it cannot be demanded it has to be a decision that you make I am willing to obey if we force you to obey you will rebel we see it when God gave the Ten Commandments the Ten Commandments was not a choice anyone that went against the commandments of the Lord was stoned to death but it didn't change the hearts of the people. They rebelled. They saw the earth opening. And those who rebelled against Moses, the earth opened and swallowed them alive. Yet the hearts of the people were not moved by that. You still see rebellion. So, it's not something that anyone can force into your life. It has to be because you are willing. Let me say this. God has never called anybody to punish God always calls people to bless. He has never chosen to curse anyone. He can't call you to curse you. He can't call you to punish you. He calls people to bless them. But because he created us in his image and in his likeness nobody forces him to do anything so he gave us his nature a nature to make quality decisions to choose what kind of life we want to live and he will give us the grace to live it to choose what we want to do with the truth that he, he gives to us and he gives us the grace to do it you can't do it by your own strength you still need to rely on him even after you are willing even after you have said I am willing to follow the Lord you still need his grace For you to be able to completely obey the voice of the Lord. But the grace is available all the time. It is available to everyone who is willing. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the grace is available to everyone always willing if you are willing 
grace will be released. It is there. God has put it in place. Israel is a perfect example of how God deals with his people. If you want to learn how God will deal with you as a believer, don't ignore the Old Testament. There are people that say, oh, I am a New Testament believer. You know, we are not under the law and blah, 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 blah. I am here to tell you, you may not be under the law, but the scripture is given to us, all of it, for correction, for reproof, for admonishment, for exhortation. It is all, all of it, new and old. And let me tell you, the Old Testament to me is very key to our long life, our prosperity, our peace with God, and our spiritual understanding of what is in the New Testament. I spend a lot of my time studying the old. There is a lot in the New Testament which is just instructions, which is just letters being written to churches to help the church to become what the church wanted to be. But in the Old Testament, God deals with a nation that he calls his own. And that nation is the foundation of our faith. The nation Israel. And when he called them out of Egypt, that is very significant to us as believers calling them out of egypt is like your salvation he called you out of the world and when he called them he said i am taking you to a good land a land that flows with milk and honey. A land where you will have no scarcity. It is all in Deuteronomy. He says, I am taking you, what we read yesterday, I took you out of that land like on an eagle's wings. Because you were under a bondage under a strength that you could never take yourself out and this was the condition of our lives before salvation many of us were bound by things that even if we wanted to be good this thing would still creep and follow us this is why the apostle paul lamenting about sin he says that the nature of sin in a man all the time wants to do, he wants, man wants to do the right thing, but he finds himself doing the wrong thing because of the sin that is in him, the nature, the old nature. And he says, Who oh, will deliver us from this body, from this old nature, the nature of sin? Now, when Israel was delivered, there is something God did, which is a sign of salvation. It is in Psalms 105.
He says, when he took them out of that land, there was none among them that was feeble. None. And what does the scripture say? It actually that is the last part. He took them and they were loaded with silver and gold. Material things. And none among them was feeble or there was none among them that was weak. That is Psalms 105 as what? Is it 37? He also brought them out with silver and gold. There was none feeble among his tribes. He brought them out, out of Egypt with silver, with silver and gold. And gold. And none among them was feeble. There was none among them that was sick. This, they are starting their life in a clean sheet. He is bringing them out with a plan. He has. He has brought them out because he has a mission for them to accomplish. He is not just delivering them so that they can be free. He has some work for them to do. He has an assignment. And the assignment cannot be fulfilled. Number one, when they are sick in their bodies. So he makes sure before they leave Egypt, all the, all the sicknesses that were in their bodies and all the physical weaknesses were dealt with. And they were dealt with in one thing that is a New Testament concept which is called a communion. Everybody say communion. communion. He told everybody in the last day before he takes them out, he says that they should be at home as a family, gathering together. They should all be together and they would have a meal. And when they are having that meal, they will not eat like they are staying in Egypt, but they will eat with their sandals on, with themselves ready to walk out because after this meal, Pharaoh will let them go. Because all the firstborns in Egypt have died, except those who were in the homes where there was blood on the doorposts, blood on the windows. That was the only place where the angel of death went over. And while Egypt is losing their firstborns, and the firstborn is your strength. Your firstborn, according to scripture, is your strength. So when your firstborn dies, or is killed your strength has been removed so God removed the strength of Egypt by killing their firstborn and he had told Pharaoh Israel is my firstborn so in terms of nation Israel is the firstborn nation we are not the firstborns the firstborn is Israel is the strength of God. And tomorrow, if you will be here, I will show you the secret 
of the Jewish obedience which is very, very secret. There are very few people. It's in the Bible, but there are very few people who know it. battles this is why it's the only nation in the whole world that has no friend as a neighbor surrounded all sides by enemies and they have never been able to destroy them there is a secret it was given to them by God and they Every, every true practicing Jew. And these are the remnants that, that preserve the nation. They practice it every year. And this is what God is saying to them. When they are living after the firstborns of, of Egypt have died. And their firstborns have been preserved. And everything they have has been preserved. The angel of death went over their, over their houses. They are inside there having communion. Having what? They were inside the houses in obedience. And the holy communion is not something you take because it's bread and wine it is a sign of our obedience to the truth this is why if you take it in an in an unworthy manner you fall sick nobody says it as straight as i will say it because the apostle paul says it straight he says you fall sick you become weak and you die prematurely This is also a truth that is in our Bibles that the church does not know. So many people that are dying in the church, they are dying because of this. Look at your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, neighbor. it is time to know the truth that you can walk in perfect health you can live a full span of your life and God can fight your enemies. Those are the benefits I'm going to talk about. I have given you all of them. They are there where we read. When you walk with God in obedience, he told them, I am giving you an angel. This is Israel, this is not the church. And I will show you how it applies to the church. He says, I will give, I will send my angel to go before you. This angel that goes before you, you must take heed to him. You must listen to what this angel is saying. Because this angel will not bear your rebellion. Every disobedience, this angel will not bear it. I am sending him so that you may go into the land that 
I am sending you to. You can't get there without his guidance. It is him, that angel, that is going to bring you into that land. And listen, oh, Israel is given very, very clear instructions by the Lord. And he tells them, uh, beware of him and obey him. Obey his voice. Do not provoke him. For he will not pardon your transgression. For my name is in him. That is the warning. And verse 22 is a, begins with a but. It says, but if you will indeed obey his voice. And do all that he speaks. Then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. My angel will go before you and he will bring you to a land that is already occupied by seven nations that are greater than you. But they will not defeat you. Because I will become an enemy to your enemies. I will become an adversary to your adversaries. I will fight. His, in other words, he is telling them, when you obey this angel, I will fight your battles. Anyone that rises up against you, I will bring them down. There is nothing that you will need to do. All you need to do is akin to the voice of this angel. He is going before you to pave the way for you. And when he does that, you will defeat. There they are in chapter 23, there are listed six tribes, but there were seven that dwelt in the land of Canaan. The only one that is missing there is the Gigashites, the Canaanites, the Hevites, all the seven tribes. They were all greater. Each one of those tribes was greater than Israel. So if they put their forces together, Israel would be nothing. But it didn't matter because God had sent them with an angel. You need a spirit guide. You need an angelic guidance. This angel is in the New Testament the sign of the Holy Spirit. He will not pardon. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead or the Trinity. He is the one that is grieved. He can be quenched. He is the one that stays with us. He lives in us. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. It is the Holy Spirit who experiences all our obedience and our disobedience. He experiences first and our rebellion and our, you remember, stubbornness. He experiences it and he can't stand it. You have to pay attention to him. The Holy Spirit, you take away the presence of the Holy Spirit in the church. Let me put it direct to you. You take away the presence of the Holy Spirit in your spiritual life. You will be defeated in every battle, even the smallest. That's why he cannot be resident. He must be president. 
he must be ruler over your life he must be the one that tells you what to do and when he says don't do this you don't do it he says do this and you do it Amen. he is he is our spirit guide and he guides us into all truth he guides us into the will of God this angel that led them was an angel whose name God says my name is in him so it's not just an angel he says he will not take your disobedience because my name is in him but if you will obey his voice then I the Lord not the angel I the Lord who will become an enemy to your enemies I will become an adversary to your adversaries may the Lord begin to fight all your battles this year is going to be full of all kinds of battles you need the Holy Ghost you need him more than you need anything else the church that is going to survive the things that are going to be released from the kingdom of darkness because the enemy is coming in wrath he knows that his time is short I'm here to tell you what the enemy is about to release it is only those that are obedient to the Holy Spirit that will survive may you be among those who will survive he says and you shall not bow down to their gods he tells them when you get into that land and he gives it over to you make sure that you don't bow down to their gods make sure that you destroy everything that they worship don't leave things that are sacred to them destroy all those things and verse 25 he says and you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and he says and I will take away sickness from among you no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land this is how Israel was supposed to live in the promised land and I am here to tell you that's not how they lived taken away by the Babylonians God brings them back their city completely destroyed and then and their temple destroyed by the Romans they are scattered for over 2,000 years the land is taken over by the Arabs and they are scattered all over the world close to 2,600 2,600 years in in exile all over the world they have never reassembled this is why there are Jews everywhere yet at the appointed time of God God brought them back into the land and made Israel a nation and this is the beginning point if we are talking about end time events that is when Israel became a nation the last generation that will live on earth was clearly spoken about by our Lord that that is the beginning point you know when that was in 1940 huh? 1948 Israel became a nation 
the clock started turning from that time of the period that is called the period of the Gentiles. I'm here to say Israel teaches us how to be followers of God. Israel teaches us how to walk in prosperity and not lack. Not the, not the thing that is in the church. How come there was prosperity at the beginning of the nation and there was prosperity at the beginning of the church? that the Bible clearly says there was none among them that lacked. How come? Is it just a coincidence that when they left Egypt, they left Egypt rich and they were slaves for 430 years. So there was no investment they had no investment for 430 years. Yet God takes them out as a rich nation. Is it a coincidence? Is it a prosperity message that somebody created somewhere to teach prosperity so that they can, they can have some money in the church? Read my lips. It is divine order. Everybody say divine order. divine order. Last yesterday I told you he has made you kings and priests unto our God when he washed you with his blood. You saw it in, 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 in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6. When he washed us with our blood, with his, his blood, he made us kings. There cannot be a king who is called a king. Even in the remotest kingdom, a king is rich. Amen. The remotest African kingdoms, the king was rich. I, you can't be a king unless we are talking about spiritual things that are, have no impact in the natural. We can't be kings and priests. Those are the two people. The garment of the priest was not an ordinary garment. They didn't wear what everybody else wore. It was special. They didn't eat what everybody else ate. They ate special. The king and the priest. Now, where have we gone wrong? Everybody say disobedience. There is so much witchcraft going on in the church and God cannot stand that spirit. The moment you begin to rebel against God, God begins to deal with your rebellion. It is as a scene of witchcraft. It is, it is stubbornness like idolatry. And when we turn back to the Lord and we begin to serve him, Israel was told, I am not only going to deal with your enemies, but now I'm going to deal with you. I will make you different. All the other nations, they suffer miscarriage. Their wives get pregnant and they lose their children. That will not happen among you. In all the other tribes, there are barren women. Your women will never be barren. This is a promise God is giving to Israel. Your women will not be barren. And when they conceive, they will never miscarry. And the last promise there is that you will not die prematurely. I will give you a full span of your life. All those promises are all duplicated in a different
different way in the New Testament. They are promises to Israel and they are promises to God's people and you are God's people. I say you are God's people. I say you are God's people. I say you are God's people. You are not just, you are not just like your neighbor. You are, have the name of the Lord on you. You are called by his name. And he says, everyone that is called by my name must turn away from evil. That's the first thing you must obey. When, when evil tries to come your way, you say no. When those thoughts of, of disobeying God comes, you say no. I am not, I am chosen. I am peculiar. I am a holy nation. I belong to God. And I am called to declare his praises. What praise is declared when the church is full of beggars? Full of people, they come to church with needs and they stay with needs. They come to church to a God who is able to make all grace abound towards them. So that they may have sufficiency. That's not Old Testament. That's New Testament. And an abundance for every good work. But your business is lavished by the devil. He destroys whatever you put your hands to do. But the word of God says whatever you, are, you put your hands to do. God will bless. Why is God not blessing? Something is wrong my brothers and sisters. We need to fix it. Because this gospel has to be preached. For a testimony. And we are supposed to be. For testimony. When they look at you. They see you don't qualify. For what is happening in your life. But it is happening. When they look at you. They, they see things that are going on. You. That they, they wonder. Where did, which bank did you, did you rob? Because it does not make sense. I want to pray for you. Read two verses for me as I close. That this, this, this will become true. Revelation, uh, uh, Romans chapter 16 and verse 19. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. Mm -hmm. verse 20 verse 20 says and the god of peace will crush satan under your feet shortly and the god of peace will crush satan under your feet shortly may your obedience be known to all And may you be wise in what is good. May you be foolish to what is evil. Amen. The promise here is that Satan who has been released with wrath to the earth. The Lord will crush him under your feet that means god is going to give you victory over satan when you walk in obedience and your obedience becomes a testimony all people are talking about how obedient you are to those that teach you the word of god how obedient you are to do what you are taught how the testimony is being heard everywhere then god will soon send set satan he will put him under your your foot shortly bow your heads and let's pray lord i thank you because the heavens 
declares your glory and the earth declares your praise. We have spoken deep truths this afternoon. May the Holy Spirit interpret them in our hearts so that we can easily apply them and enjoy the good of the land. Good health is our portion. In the midst of sickness and pandemics, we shall not, it shall not draw nigh to our dwelling because we have hid ourselves in your obedience, O God. May everyone today who is under the anointing of my voice enjoy full span of their lives. May they begin to walk in a way, in a manner that nothing will shorten their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, help us not to turn to the left or to the right to these truths, that we will put them at the center of our hearts and we will serve you with gladness. Lord, that you may bless our bread and our water and take away sickness from among us. We bless you. Let there be no lack in this house. Let us not use what you have given to us as something so personal that we cannot give it to you. But Lord, that we will, we will be generous to the kingdom and generous to those that come to us seeking our help. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 We're going to give our, our offering right now. Shall we lift our offering before the Lord? Heavenly Father, we thank you that the entrance of your word bringeth light. Mm. Father, and that there is no darkness that can withstand the light. Father, we give this offering in the light of the truth that has been spoken to us. Father, we mix the word that we have received with faith by acting by the offering that we are releasing today. Mm. Father, we thank you that you are a God who watches over your word. You are not a man that you should lie, neither are you a son of man that you should repent. We thank you in advance for the great miracles that are about to be released as we release this offering into your hands. Mm. Father, let you be true and every man a liar. Do that which only you can do and demonstrate the truthness, the truthfulness of your word mm. in our lives individually. Mm. Father, let it be a week of personal encounters that we may be distinguished from them that are about us. Mm. We thank you, Lord. We bless you for the Rema word that has come and for the opportunity to connect with it. We thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Bless you.